Hi, it's Dwyer. It's Tuesday, January 12th, 2021. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Also, look us up on Google Podcasts as well as on Apple uh, Podcasts. Dwyer Boxing News, one word. Let's talk boxing, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Well, as I predicted here online a while ago, and it's counterintuitive because it seems otherwise, there's a big freeze out in the heavyweight division. Complete freeze out. In other words, right now in the heavyweight division, there's a concerted effort involving more than one boxer to limit competition, to avoid a certain fighter. Now, let's be clear. It's a big man era. You understand that. The guys ruling the roost right now are big men. The lineal, that's what I'm going to call him. You have to call him the WBC, in addition, right? At a minimum. Tyson Fury is huge. He's big. If he were a basketball player, he'd be a power forward or a center. And, of course, you have Anthony Joshua. He's big. In the background, you have the last man that Tyson Fury beat. Deontay Wilder. He's big too, right? Tall. These are the tall guys in the division. Now let's say something about tall guys. I know every once I know every once in a while we'll come across a tall guy, a six five, six six guy, who's extremely coordinated. Right? Michael Jordan. Kobe Bryant are just two that come to mind, right? We've come across other tall athletes who are extremely coordinated. Usain Bolt, for example. But more times than not, and I'm going <laughs> to I'm gonna upset some people here, some tall people, but more times than not, taller people just aren't as coordinated as shorter athletes. Right? It's a generalization. I'll leave it up to you as to whether or not I'm being fair here. But let's just say you watch the NBA, you'll look at a big man, and there have been coordinated centers in the NBA. Akeem Olajuwon, the great Bill Russell, right? Wilt Chamberlain, if you look at old films. But more times than not, you'll see a center and you'll say, oh, look at him. He's a big man. And they'll say, oh, he's a great athlete. Then you'll see him dribble the ball. And his dribbling won't remind you of Chris Paul's dribbling. He doesn't look like Steve Nash or Steph Curry dribbling the basketball. No, he dribbles the basketball like a big man. He's not that agile. He's not that mobile. Now, in the heavyweight division, I would argue that Anthony Joshua right? The biggest brand right now in the division. The guy who can fill Wembley Stadium. Let's be real here. Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder do not have Anthony Joshua's box office ability, right? Understand too, Anthony Joshua, and people really need to think about this carefully, because of his African roots, because he has family in Nigeria. It's one of those few athletes, and he hasn't used it enough. But he's one of those few athletes who, if he takes a tour through Africa, which he's done, will stop traffic. In other words, this is that rare athlete with international box office appeal. He's a little gun shy. He crossed the Atlantic Ocean 
showed up in New York City and lost his title to Andy Ruiz, right? It might be a long time before we see him back here in the U.S., but understand, the people in New York City knew who Anthony Joshua was. More than they would know, Tyson Fury, the best fighter in the division, in my opinion, or Deontay Wilder. Right? But make no mistake, Anthony Joshua simply, and I know he's been dancing around the ring, at least in that Ruiz rematch, he stayed outside, he was on his back foot, he showed you some back foot skills in the Kubrat Pulev fight. I know he's boxing, he has Pulev hurt, he doesn't go in for the kill, right? Even though he knocks down Pulev, he waits a few rounds. I understand in his 30s, Anthony Joshua fancies himself as a boxer. Let's stop kidding ourselves. And I know there's Joshua Nation out there, and you can let me have it in the comment section of this video. But Anthony Joshua simply is not the boxer that Alexander Usyk is. Folks, there's a gap. There's a gap between the two guys. Right? It's profound. Usyk is a different person depending on the fight he's in. He's a bigger version of Terence Crawford. Right? Usyk, style-wise, and I know this is not the way the public thinks, I'm just telling you one man's opinion here. Right? But style-wise, Usyk has already had one of the toughest possible fights that he could have in the heavyweight division. Understand, unlike Anthony Joshua, Derek Chisora is very aggressive. I know we think of Chisora as a mid-tier heavyweight, right? I know we don't put Chisora in the class of Joshua, one loss, Tyson Fury, no losses, Deontay Wilder, one loss, right? Chisora has a few losses. But understand, Chisora will hunt you down. If you're a cruiserweight, up at heavyweight, and you're more agile than the guys at heavyweight, the person who would test you would be the person who could try to smother your agility. Let's just say Derek Chisora came after Usyk. I know Usyk didn't look that good in the fight. I'm not saying he did. What I am saying, and it might shock some people, is that style-wise, that's a tougher fight for Usyk than Anthony Joshua. Right? Joshua's not going to come find him early. Whereas Derek Chisora hops in the car and is speeding in the fast lane down the highway. Right? If you're a passenger in a Derek Chisora car, you're like, whoa, player, come on now. Speed limit. Speed limit. Hey, look at that car 20 feet ahead of us. Guy's going that fast. You know who Anthony Joshua is. You get on the highway... You're in the slow lane. He starts to build up his confidence, right? Doesn't matter whether or not there's traffic on the road. He starts to big, build up his confidence. Then you're in the middle lane. Right? When you talk about the speed limit with Chisora, you're saying, hey, player, you know, the speed limit's X. You're going over the speed limit. When you talk about the speed limit with Joshua, you're saying, hey, player, we got to keep traffic moving here. Right? You're going X and the speed limit is X plus 10. We need to lift this. Right? As we learned in the pull-up fight, even when Joshua starts passing cars, and you're thinking to yourself, oh, we're going to get there before this cap in the second lane here, in the middle lane. Joshua will take his foot off the gas. 
Suddenly, you'll see that cab in the middle lane way ahead of you, right? As Joshua paces himself. Folks, that doesn't work against a more agile opponent who can stay outside, but who also has the skills to come inside when Joshua feels secure enough to actually raise room temperature. Let's just say Usyk is a tougher fight for Joshua than Deontay Wilder, right? We, the public, have a certain caste system in our head of who the elite fighters are. That caste system might actually not be right. The ranking might not be right. Maybe Derek Chisora was a very tough fight for Usyk. Maybe Usyk has an easier time against big clunky guys like Anthony Joshua or big guys who are too specialized and too low volume like Deontay Wilder. And let's face it too, Tyson Fury historically has had problems with smaller athletic guys. Right? You're watching the Otto Wallen fight and you realize, you know what, Wallen's a better athlete than Tyson Fury. Don't get me wrong. Tyson Fury is one of the best boxers. He's one of the most talented boxers on the planet. Right? He's ambidextrous, folks. Right? That left jab you saw him hitting Deontay Wilder with, he could have flipped it and hit him with the right jab it still would have been a stiff jab, right? Tyson Fury is immensely talented, but he's not as coordinated as some smaller fighters. So the Otto Wallen fight, you know, if Wallen just had more skills, since he cut Tyson Fury as it was, since he got Tyson Fury off his back foot and onto his front foot to try to smother him, Right? If Otto Wallen, a better athlete than Tyson Fury, just had more boxing skills, as well as, of course, a referee who actually understood that a fight could be stopped on cuts, because that fight should have been stopped on cuts, Otto Wallen might well have beaten Tyson Fury. Right? Steve Cunningham drops Tyson Fury. Then the referee seemed to start allowing some obvious roughhouse tactics, right? Tyson Fury, when he wants to channel Roberto Duran and hit you with elbows, knows exactly how to do that. You'll notice in that fight, Tyson Fury starts roughhousing Steve Cunningham. That's no longer a boxing match. That's a desperate bigger man realizing he's being outboxed, turning it into a pseudo-wrestling match, right? Tyson Fury has a problem with coordinated smaller opponents. That's who Usyk is. Understand too, Usyk can fight out of either stance. Usyk is advanced, just like Tyson Fury is advanced. So, we heard a lot of BS. Right? A lot of bull. I'm not going to say the second part of it, but you know what I'm talking about. Anthony Joshua, who has, let's be charitable here, a complicated relationship with a great fighter. Right? A great fighter. One of the best heavyweights of the last half century. Lennox Lewis. Right? Their relationship's complicated. Don't go by the PR campaign you're seeing now, where both guys realize they have to coexist, right? Lennox Lewis, who's retired now, will always be a great fighter. So Anthony Joshua realizes, okay, Lewis was undisputed champion. <laughs> He's going to be a VIP at big heavyweight fights. The press is going to see Lennox Lewis in the crowd and say, gee, I wonder what Lennox Lewis, former undisputed heavyweight champion, thinks about this fight Anthony Joshua understands, okay, I have to deal with Lennox Lewis. 
He's here in the building and he's giving opinions on my fights. Not only that, he fought in the United Kingdom. Even though you and I know, Lewis, Jamaicans like me claim him. Canadians claim him. He was on the Canadian Olympic team. But of course, the UK also claims him, right? So Lewis is a big figure. Much bigger than the persona he gives off, right? Like George Foreman, Lennox Lewis likes to keep it low-key, right? He's not a Ali type. He doesn't come in and say, I'm the greatest, or I was the greatest, right? Lewis is low-key. But understand, Lewis and Joshua don't really get along when the cameras aren't rolling. You understand that. Joshua is very competitive. I know he's very corporate. If there's a guy in boxing who says the right thing, he's a great ambassador for the sport. It's Anthony Joshua. But you understand when people start praising Lennox Lewis, right, for epic fights, understand, Lewis isn't avoiding Evander Holyfield. He fights Holyfield twice, right? I'll agree Lewis should have fought Riddick Bowe, right? I'll agree that Lewis took step aside money. Bo was the champ. Lewis said, hey, pay me. You know, I'm a brother who needs a few dollars. This was early in Lewis's career. And Lewis didn't step up to Bo. But understand, Lewis beat Bo in the Olympics. Understand, too, Lewis fought guys like Ray Mercer. Very tough at the time. David Tua. Very tough at the time. He closes his career fighting... Vitaly Klitschko, another guy who I personally feel is one of the best heavyweights of the last half century. Lewis, of course, fought Mike Tyson. You didn't get the feeling that there was a Deontay Wilder out there who Lewis somehow found a way to not fight for years. For years. Right? Anthony Joshua... Let's just put it this way. He's fought Andy Ruiz twice. He's fought Kubrat Pulev. Given the heavyweight division of the last four years, this brother has had to tap dance, in my opinion. To not fight Deontay Wilder once, and to not fight Tyson Fury, who's in his country once. This guy's been so selective in his fights that you've had guys down on their luck like Tyson Fury, right out of the sport. Then he comes back, and he's fighting fighters you've hardly heard about. He's begging for a fight with Anthony Joshua in what looks to be an easy payday for Joshua, right? Here's a guy, <laughs> here's a guy who beat Vladimir Klitschko. Here's a guy who was heavyweight champion. Now he's down on his luck, but guess what, folks? On paper, he's still unbeaten. And you mean to tell me that Anthony Joshua couldn't find the time to fight him? That Deontay Wilder was able to fight Tyson Fury, who did not make huge money for that fight? So let's just say Joshua, of course, has a problem, right? There's a guy in the room who has prestige, who's done things Joshua hasn't done, Lennox Lewis, right? So Joshua has been talking about being undisputed. That's what he wants, supposedly, while he's not fighting the WBC champion for years, right? For years. Let's just be clear. I know there's a Joshua side of the argument. If you want to make it, make it in the comment section of this video. I got no problem with that. Right? But let's just say this. Now we come to find out that Joshua doesn't want to fight Alexander Usyk. And there's a problem. Usyk, unbeaten, former undisputed cruiserweight champion. And he did that, by the way, by beating Maris Bredis 
and Murat Gassiev. Right? Now, of course, Usyk is the mandatory. Still unbeaten. WBO contender. So, as you can imagine, the WBO is telling its champion. Player, if you're going to carry our belt, if you're going to carry our water, you're going to have to face our mandatory. It gets more complicated. And I don't blame Joshua for wanting to fight Tyson Fury. That's the big money fight. That's the lineal. But it gets more complicated. Usyk, of course, had a deal with Eddie Hearn one of boxing's major players. Right now, I want fighters to understand, and I'm serious about this. You think the promoter is on your side, but yet the promoter gets paid regardless of who wins the fight. Usyk's deal with Eddie Hearn called for Usyk's next fight to be Anthony Joshua. If that fight didn't happen, then the Usyk-Eddie Hearn contract would come to an end. Let me just say, bravo to the Usyk advisors who came up with this one. Right, so Usyk is basically saying, look, I want the fight for the championship, right? I'm going to be 34 here. I rely on my legs and athleticism. As they say, the legs are the first to go. The first to go. Right? Understand, everyone wants to be Ali. Ali won the heavyweight title when he was 22 years old. You can jump around in your 20s. In your 30s, not that much. When a mover loses the ability to move and they start getting hit with punches, it can go downhill. You can go from being... Young Ali, who says, look at me, I'm as pretty as a girl, right, untouched. To old Ali, who's rope-a-doping sluggers, getting hit, getting hurt in fights. Has his former sparring partner, Larry Holmes, motioning to the referee to stop the fight. So Usyk's time is right now. One of his dreams is to have the heavyweight title. So you know what's going on here. Joshua wants to fight another big man, Tyson Fury. It's a bigger payday. Joshua finally understands the payday for fighting Fury. Right? I believe Joshua hoped Fury would go away. The problem was Fury then dusted off Deontay Wilder. Now Joshua has members of the press coming up to him in his own country, asking the question, are you even the best fighter in the UK? So Joshua wants to tie that up. Joshua, who's lost already, understands. He needs to get paid. He's now in his 30s. If he's going to risk his legacy in a fight, it might as well be the fight that pays the best. Right? Right? Boxing hardcore people like you and me know who Usyk is. Let's just say, even though Usyk won an Olympic gold medal, he's not as well known as Tyson Fury, who fought and beat Vladimir Klitschko. When Vladimir Klitschko was still Vladimir Klitschko. So understand what's happening here. You're hearing about a multi-fight deal, right? That seems to be the new vogue. Deontay Wilder had a multi-fight deal with Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury supposedly is talking about a multi-fight deal with Eddie Hearn's fighter, <laughs> Anthony Joshua. If you don't see the clear conflict of interest there, you know, the idea that Eddie Hearn has a deal with Usyk, but he also has a deal with Joshua. Right? So he has to pick the fighter whose best interests he's going to pursue, right? Eddie Hearn's one of the best in the game. I don't mean to call him out too much here. But you know how this is going to end up. 
So, Joshua is going to have a multi-fight deal, just like he had with Andy Ruiz. He's going to have a multi-fight deal with Tyson Fury. And, of course, he's going to give up the WBO belt. Now, what that means is that Lennox Lewis will continue to be, at least for the foreseeable future, one man's prediction, the last undisputed heavyweight champion. Let me also say, too, Usyk, who looked hunted by Derek Chisora, is going to be a betting underdog whenever a fight against the winner of the Anthony Joshua Tyson Fury series ends. But understand, just like Gennady Golovkin right now, he's also going to be older. It's January of 2021. How long is it going to take Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua to finish their series? Folks, that could take a year and a half. That could take two years. Usyk is so desperate. He's so frozen out right now. He's so desperate to fight one of the big three that he's pivoted. He's even started talking about fighting Deontay Wilder. Wilder, of course, wants to fight Tyson Fury again. Now I understand it. Right, you have one loss, you know the ego's involved. A warrior's gonna say, man, the guy who beat me, that's the guy I wanna fight. The fact that, of course, he has your title makes it even that much more urgent. I'm sure on a personal level, Deontay Wilder wants revenge. Especially since, if you've tracked Wilder's comments, he seems to feel that the fight was fixed. Right, that Fury cheated, somehow took padding out of his glove and stuff like that, and that some people in his corner may have been in cahoots. Right, because you get an opportunity to inspect an opponent's gloves and what have you. Um, right now, Deontay Wilder's a bit of a conspiracy theorist. And I say that as someone who has a crime website here on YouTube where I talk about things like the Kennedy assassination. Right, well, let's just say I'm not the only person who believes there might be conspiracies out there. Deontay Wilder does. I'm not sure if he's in the right state of mind to fight Usyk. But let's just say I don't expect him to fight Usyk. Even if Usyk gets the WBO share of the title. So there's a distinct possibility. Distinct. That Usyk is the best at heavyweight right now, even after a lackluster fight against Derek Chisora. Because, of course, there are very few people in the heavyweight division who have the foot speed to keep up with Usyk to try to hunt him down, like Derek Chisora has. Right? Usyk, I'm sure, is. Very happy that Chisor is in his 30s because that fight is interesting. It is worth watching a few times. Right? Chisora is ready early in that fight. He's coming after Usyk. But then he starts fighting two opponents, Usyk and Father Time. You notice Derek starts to get tired in the middle of the fight in a way that regular Chisora, younger Chisora, wouldn't. Right? That's the reality, folks. So, understand, eventually, the person running out of gas is going to be Usyk in the middle of fights because Father Time is unbeaten. So let's reimagine the heavyweight division. I think the best fighter in the heavyweight division is Tyson Fury. 
I believe the person in the division who would give Fury the best fight would be Alexander Usyk, who would have a decent shot to win that fight. Depending on the odds, I might take Usyk in that fight. But you're not going to see that fight for a while. Because Tyson Fury wants to get paid. Tyson Fury wants the lower hanging fruit. And Tyson Fury understands that he does better against big clunky opponents than he does against agile, smaller, highly skilled guys. So let's think it through. Let's say Usyk becomes a WBO champion. Who would be the toughest opponents for him? Right, just think it through. I believe the people who would be the toughest opponents for Usyk in the heavyweight division would be the same group that were the toughest opponents for him in the cruiserweight division. Folks, he barely beat Maris Breedis. Barely. Right? If Breedis comes up to heavyweight, and I know it sounds crazy, right? We have a big three. We have quality heavyweights. How could a little man come up to heavyweight and actually be one of the best? Well, it's because big men can't dribble like more agile, smaller men. But understand, Breedis, Gassiev, another guy who's already at heavyweight. I want people to watch Gassiev's career. Right? Just understand, though. That agility doesn't age well. Right? Power does. Vladimir Klitschko, I'm sure, can still punch today. But timing and agility don't age well. And I believe the calculus being done by Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua has them understanding the birth certificates of Usyk and Breedis. Right? They understand that these guys are older right now. And just like we went through a period in boxing where Canelo, a big puncher, actually had his folks announce that he wanted to fight Golovkin, but he was going to wait a year to do so. You remember that one? Knowing that Golovkin was already well in his 30s. We have a situation here where big clunky guys are trying to wait out a talented, more agile, but older threat to the throne. Right? So pay close attention to the freeze out. What I want fans to think about is if we get the same kind of nonsense that we got when Joshua and Wilder supposedly wanted to fight each other, right? Where you heard about it, you thought, oh, this fight has to happen, right? Wilder at one point said, hey, I'll go to the UK. And you thought, oh, what's stopping them from having this fight in front of 70, 80,000 people, right? There'd be enough money. How could we be arguing about the split when we're going to be making tens of millions of dollars? And then, of course, that fight never happened. Right? Only in boxing. Months passed. Months. And you thought to yourself, when's this fight going to happen? When are they going to announce this fight? And it never happened. What I want fans to consider is if Fury and Joshua are able to announce their fight two months from now. It's January 2021. If March rolls around and you're still waiting for the announcement, I want the boxing press to start saying, okay, look, Joshua, if Tyson Fury's not going to sign the contract or you can't figure out the benefits of a 50-50 split, Fight Usyk. He's your mandatory. 
Let's say Joshua gets hurt. I want people to go to Tyson Fury and say, hey, Tyson, you're the lineal. Here's a guy who's unbeaten, who was undisputed. Undisputed at Cruiser, an obvious boxing Hall of Famer. I know Usyk has less than 20 pro fights. He's an obvious boxing Hall of Famer right now, just based on the quality of his opposition. Right? We need to start demanding the talented guys who are frozen out right now get shots. Let's not leave it in the hands of the promoters who win either way. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Let me also give a special shout out to Sheldon Adelson's family. This background is inspired by the Venetian in Las Vegas. Its owner, Sheldon Adelson, passed in the last 24 hours. He is missed. True business visionary. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.